Hey, welcome back to Way of the Wrench, and on today's very special episode, I'm going to be killing two birds with one stone. I'm going to be showing you how to generate your very own cabinet file so that your addressable LEDs can work with DOF. And I'm also going to be giving you an English tutorial on how to use Arnaz's Tiny Tools, which happens to be a program that helps you generate your cabinet file. So let's get going. All right, so I thought I would do something a little different than everyone else out there doing these tutorial videos. And rather than just kind of talk about what's the cabinet file and then giving my cabinet file to you guys for you to um, edit to change for your cabinet, I thought I would show you how to use Arnaz's Tiny Tools cabinet generator so that there is less chance of syntax errors. Now what that means is when you are doing coding, and really it's any type of coding, if you have something wrong, like an extra space or something's capitalized or you're missing a parentheses or whatever, it might not work. And so uh, to make that problem kind of go away, I'm gonna show you the Arnaz Tiny Tools and it'll generate it and it should be syntax free. You're just simply plugging in the information for your cabinet. Now, I will do what everyone else did as well and I will share my cabinet file. So if you feel like you just wanna go grab it and change it for your own needs, go for it. Uh, or another better idea is why don't you print it off and then as you're watching my video, you can follow along and see how the cabinet file looks. What a great idea. Now, before we get started here, it would be a really good idea to make yourself a little cheat sheet of how you install the LEDs on your cabinet. Now, what I mean by that is from your Octo board, what specific channel goes to what exact strip? And then in that channel or strip, how many LEDs are there total? And where does the data come from and which direction does it flow? So for example, on a side strip, data comes in from the top and goes down towards the front of the cabinet and it's on the left hand side. Or if we're talking a matrix, my matrix starts at the bottom right hand corner, goes up and it travels from the right to the left in an alternating pattern, meaning going up and down and up and down. So that's the info I'm gonna to need to be able to plug into Arnaz Tiny Tools. So let's take a look at finding Arnaz Tiny Tools online and get it downloaded. All right, the first thing you're going to do is type in Arnaz Tiny Tools and search that into your search engine and you're going to find this guy's website pretty quick. Now, this guy's been a long time member of a virtual pinball community as well as he has a store where he makes and sells different boards and accessories for virtual pinballs. So I uh, highly recommend you take a look at his stuff and we're going to end up using his uh, Tiny Tools um, cabinet file generator today. So. Uh, you can take a look for it manually. I notice that this link is broken here, but it does work here. So we're gonna go Arnaz Tiny Tools. And then the first thing you're gonna notice is it's all in French. Oh no, I've only got French 211, and I think he even made fun of people that didn't speak French in his uh, YouTube tutorial videos. But don't worry, Arnaz, I got your back. I'm gonna do an English tutorial for you guys. Uh, there is some English uh, translated on the bottom here, so if you're not sure what it says. And basically we're just going to go all the way to the bottom and we need to download the zip file, which is an MSI, so it'll install it. So download it. Once you got it downloaded, go to where you downloaded it. Copy it. And then you can right click and paste and put it right there on the desktop. Now you're going to have to unzip this file. So right click. I uh, use your unzip program. I use 7-zip. It's free. And you can extract it right here. And then you're going to have this little MSI logo pop up. Okay, and then you're going to double left click on this and just say yes to everything to install it. If it comes up as it's got a virus, he says that on his web page there that you just have to unblock it and that it is safe. And once you got that there, you're going to have this icon pop onto your desktop. Double click on this to open up Tiny Tools. Now, when you first open up Tiny Tools, there's a pretty good chance it's gonna be in French language, which is gonna throw you right off, uh, but don't be too afraid. Right up here where it says Langues is language, you can go to Anglais, which is English, and it'll go away and come back, and then it'll be in English. So that's an easy one. All right, now, first thing you're gonna notice when you start looking at stuff in here is uh, it works with Wemos, which is another board that uh, I'm not gonna be doing today but I am doing Teensy, so you can switch the card type and turn it to what you want. So there's our Teensy. And up here, you've got your firmware flashers so that you can actually flash your Teensy. And I'll do that at the end, but right now I'm going to show you how to do the cabinet generator. Now, it's popping up my 
cabinet file that I've already made for you guys. Um, so once you've made one, you can actually save it and that's why it's popping up like this. However, I'm gonna show you how to make a new one. So we're gonna press new. All right, now that we've got a new cabinet here, starting right at the top, we're gonna open this. And the very first thing you have to do is tell it what COM port your Teensy is on. And so you should know that already because you were doing the testing of the LEDs. So I know mine is on three. So I'm just gonna go and get rid of the one and add a three. Now, you don't have to change anything else here. You can leave that. Uh, this is just a name here. If you wanna see kind of your own name or the name of your cabinet, you can put whatever you want there. And next is we're gonna to go to our outputs. Now, right now there's nothing. So output one, if you notice there's eight outputs, is the same thing as channel. So for example, on my first channel, that's gonna be my left play field. So I'm gonna click on output and it pops up that we wanna add a new toy. So press that. And then when it shows you the toy, you click on that to put in the details. Now, starting at the very top, this is a play field strip. So it's just a single LED strip that's long. So the width is going to be one. And then the height of it is actually the length. So for my play field, that's gonna be 144 LEDs long. Now, this next part here wants to tell the computer what arrangement or where's the data coming and going from on this strip. Now, if you click on this little pull down bar, it'll give you all the different options. And there's actually a really good photo of what all this means. Uh, that I'm going to pop up in a second here to help you figure out what exactly you need for arrangement for this strip. He's got a little spot up here under help. Click on that. Go down to the amazing cabinet generator and go down to this spot where it says LED arrangement. And so you can look at these drawings to see where the data flows through your matrixes or through your strips so that you can put it in the proper in your cabinet file. So for example, for mine, my LED matrix starts at the bottom right hand corner, hence the dot, and it goes up and it goes from the right side of the matrix to the left in an alternating up and down pattern. So for me, I have to use bottom up, alternate right left. So you basically just use these drawings to figure out which one you need and which direction the data is flowing so that you can put it in proper. So for me right now, this is going to be top down, top is kind of the back of the cabinet and down would be the front. So it's top down and it's on the left. And if there was more, it would go to the right, but it's on the left. Okay, now this color order, for whatever reason, RGB does not work. So you actually have to make it GRB to get it to work properly. Now you don't have to touch this right here. This is kind of a way of making the LEDs glow a certain way and there you can change it, but for what we're doing, we're just gonna leave it. And uh, the most reason why people change this is to do the brightness. However, he has added a brightness uh, line of code in here that we can change this. So 100 is 100% lights and you can basically change that down to 10 or 50%. Whatever you put there will change the brightness. So for example, I just put the matrix to 10% brightness in the cabinet file and then saved it and opened it up to show you guys the difference. So you can totally adjust that scale of how bright you want things, or if you're finding that the matrix is a little bit brighter than your side strips or whatever, you can totally balance it out using the brightness number. Now the name here, we can name it whatever we like. So let's name it something that we can keep track of. So we can call this left side. Playfield. And if you notice, it says DOF output port. Now, when we get into DOF, the port refers to kind of where the information is going from the LED. Uh, so for right now, we're gonna use port one because it's our very first one and I'll explain it on the next one here what needs to change. So that one's done. Now, I only want that side strip on one channel. So that's it for this one. So now I wanna go to the second channel, hit output, add another toy click on it, and now it's basically the same thing, except it's the right side. So top down, right to the left, but there's only one strip. Change this to GRB, leave that, leave that, and then let's call this right side playfield. 
And notice that it says the same number as before. Now for these, for each addressable LED strip, it needs three ports to be able to actually transmit the information for red, green, and blue. So if this is the second channel, we can't use uh, port one, two, or three, because that's used by the first one. So we have to use port four, and then it'll be four, five, six uh, later when I show that in DOF. So for right now, we just have to add um, past the three. So first one was one, two, three, this is four. This will make more sense when we actually get onto uh, DOF and seeing why it's like this. Okay, that's another one done. Now we're gonna add another one. Okay, for the matrix, the width is the actual width of from left to right of the matrix. So we have two eight by 32, so that's actually 64 width. And then the height is eight LEDs tall. And then this one is really important to get right because on your matrix, it's not just flashing patterns or one strip. You're actually gonna have symbols and text. And if you get this wrong, then you'll have symbols look weird. You'll have text that looks like mirrored or left to right wrong or kind of scrambled. So we really wanna make sure that we get this one right. So um, feel free to refer to the uh, diagram showing what the patterns look like. So a good table to test whether your text is proper on your matrix is the getaway, high speed two. Uh, as soon as you start the game up, it'll go to this flashing shift text. And uh, you can see that this one is upside down. And so just in the cabinet file to show this, I just basically turned my bottom up to top down and it, it's upside down. So if you see this, it's just a matter of changing that LED arrangement in your cabinet file to suit whichever direction it needs to go. All right, so if you see an issue like this, where the text is kind of right, but it is a little bit garbled up, it's the same issue. You gotta look at your LED arrangement, and in this case, what I simulated was that I forgot to put in alternate. So what it's trying to do is put bottom up from the right to the left, but every single column of LEDs goes up, not up, and then down and alternating. So what's happening is it's taking some of the letters and putting it at the top, the next row it puts at the bottom and it's kind of mixing them up as it goes across. So this is all just LED arrangement issues. So for me, mine starts at the bottom, goes up, it alternates, so it goes down and up and down and up uh, from the right to the left. So I'm gonna use bottom up, alternate, right to the left. Okay, change this to the GRB. And we're gonna call this matrix. And this one here is gonna be port seven. Okay, on to the next one. Okay, now I thought I would do something different for the next uh, LED strip. So I'm gonna use channel four or output four. And instead of keeping it all separate, I'm gonna put the speakers, the lights on the back box and the lights on the underbody all the same channel. So uh, let's add another toy. Now I'm going to put the speakers first and the speakers are basically just a strip. It doesn't really matter. So we're going to leave the width as one and the height for the numbers for the speakers is 70. And then for the LED arrangement, it doesn't really matter. Uh, all of these will work because it's just a strip. Um, so I'm just going to go bottom up from right to left because that's kind of how my data stream goes on the one speaker side and it's the same exact way on the other one. Change this to GRB, I call this speakers. And we are now on to port 10. Okay, now instead of going to another output, we're just gonna go back up on the same channel and add yet another toy. Click on it. So once again, the width is one. Height for the undercab is 147. Starts at the top down, and then it alternates from the left to the right. Top down, alternate to the left to right. But it doesn't really matter because it's essentially just a strip and it's just gonna be mostly underglow and flashing. Change this, GRB, leave that stuff. And we'll call this under cab. OK. 
Okay, we just used 10, 11, 12, so we're on to port 13. And last one, we're going to add some more here. Once again, width of the strip is one. And for the back box, I have 94 LEDs. Uh, once again, it's just a strip, it doesn't really matter, but my data does go from the bottom up, alternates from the right to the left. Okay, change that to the GRB. And we'll call this back box. That'll be 13, 14, 15, this will be 16 for the port. Okay, and then that's it. So once you've made this file, I highly recommend that you save the cabinet just by clicking save. Now what we're actually saving here is just the actual cabinet file for the Arnaz Tiny Tools. It's not actually your .xml, so it doesn't matter where it gets saved. But if you wanted to make sure that you know which one it is. Okay, and then once you've got that all done, you have to export it. So you're going to hit this button here. And then it is going to make a .xml file. So we want to call this cabinet so that it is properly named for when we go to use it. And then uh, put it somewhere where you know you're going to be able to find it. So for example, we can go to the desktop. I'll save it there for now. Okay, there's already one there, so I'm just going to replace it. And there we go, that's it. Now, right down here in the corner, here is our cabinet file. Now, to take a look at this, you're going to right click and you're going to open with, you're going to open it with Notepad. All right, starting from the top here, things that are going to matter is here is the channels, right? Strip one, strip two, strip three, strip four. So we've only got four of the eight channels. There is the total number of the LEDs. So those are all the same, what we inputted, and this one has got those three different things, the speakers, the back box, and undercab added together. And then this one's really, really important here. So make sure that that is the same comm that your Teensy is on, otherwise this will not work. Don't ask me how I know that. Uh, and then you can go through here and kind of take a look and see what we've done here. So for example, there's our first strip, left side play field. Uh, it has a width of one, height of 144. There's our LED arrangement that we chose. There's the GRB, and then this is a little bit different. So this here, this number where it says first LED number, this is keeping track of what number LED in the complete order of this thing is. So for example, right now, it's the very first channel, very first LED strip, so it's got a one. There's our brightness. So any of you, if you've already got a cabinet file already working and you just want to turn it down and you don't know how to do that, you just need to copy this line of code and put it right in here under what you want and then you can adjust that number. Um, okay, and then when you get to the next channel, the next strip, you can see there's our numbers we put in and order. You'll notice that the first LED number is not one. So it's not the first LED of that channel, it's the LED of the total amount of LEDs that are in your system. So, uh, for example, this was 144 LEDs, so the very next LED in a strip would be 145, and that's why that looks like that. Now, why I'm talking about this is later on, if you have an issue where you're displaying too many lights and you'd like to turn off a couple at the beginning or the end of a strip, you can change this number to reflect that. So, for example, it says 145, but let's say I didn't want to display the first five LEDs in my strip. Then I would say that the first LED number is 150. So it would, in essence, skip five of those LEDs and it will just skip them and not light them up. So you can adjust at the beginning of a strip by doing that. Or you can take the height here and change that as well and that will do the same thing. You can take from the beginning or the end of your strip and I just make the changes and save it. Um, okay, what else are we gonna talk about? So here's our matrix, that should be all pretty self-explanatory. You can see that for each of these, the first number of the LED is changing and growing as we add it. 
Now, once we get to the end here, this is kind of important. These are those ports that we picked, right? So this is port one, and it's going to take three of these ports to be able to put out information for red, green, and blue. So that takes three ports. So that's why the next one starts at four. So it'll be four, five, six. Then for this strip, it would be seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And there's 16, 17, 18. And then that's it. Okay, so now that we've got this cabinet file folder done, if you made any changes, uh, you're going to want to file, save it, and then close this down. Now, because my cabinet's a little further ahead, I want to be able to show you guys when you make your cabinet file where this actually goes. So I will talk about this in another video as well. But what you're going to do is you're going to right click on this. You can copy it or cut it. And then where you put your DOF uh, direct output feedback uh, folder later on is where it's got to go. So let's go to that. So for me, it's going to be this PC, C drive, and then right here on the C drive is where I put and where I'm going to teach you guys in the next video to put your direct output folder. So when you double click on this, there's going to be a folder in here called config. You're going to open that up and you can see my cabinet file right there. You can just right click and paste. And because there's one there, you can just say yes and replace it. But I actually don't want to do that. So. Uh, I would like my cabinet file the way it is. So that's my cabinet file there, and that's where it goes. Now, those of you that have been following along on my cabinet, you know that I bought two 8x32 matrixes, and I had a complete column of, of eight LEDs on the end that I didn't want to light, and I actually bent them beside the holder on the matrix and glue gunned them out of the way. And they are lighting up. So I had to go into my cabinet file, and I'll show you what I did to change that. So we're going to go open with. So if I go down to my matrix, which is this one right here, you can see that instead of having 8 by 64, which is how many you would have if you had two complete matrices next to each other of 8 by 32, I took one away. So the width is less. It's only 63 now. And then what I did is, because mine's at the very beginning of that uh, channel, it should have been 289, but what I did is I took 8 uh, and added that so that it would go past the beginning by 8, and so that's 297. And uh, that did the fix. It doesn't light up the LEDs that are off the side of the matrix. And um, so like I said, you can use this for customizing any of your strips or matrices if it's too long or too short, if you're wanting to do something like that. So for example, if I put this as a width of only 60, this is going to take away from the end of the matrix. So I will pop up the matrix and show you what this looks like with me taking off three columns off. So save it. So you can see that there's three columns out of that matrix removed because of that change in the cabinet file. So that's if you want to remove things at the end of your strip or the matrix. And if you want to take things off the beginning, let me show you how to do that. So we're just going to put this back to 63. And then in the beginning here, we can tell it what the first LEDs to start. So if we wanted to just kind of show that we can take this off, we have to add to this, meaning that you're telling that the first LED to start in this chain is going to be um, a certain amount of LEDs in from there. So in this case, if we wanted to take off three columns again to kind of show that from the beginning, then we'd have to add 24 to 297. So that's 321. And then save it. Okay, now you can see, because we put it back to 63, that that's all filled back in. And at the beginning, we've got three columns removed, 24 of those LEDs, because we told it to start at a later LED in the matrix. So you can totally use this to adjust your LED strips and matrix to show what you want or don't at the ends of your strips. Okay, now the other thing I wanted to show you is, besides the generator, it actually has a way of flashing the firmware. Now, we still technically have the old basic test LED sketch on our Teensy, which isn't going to work. We have to put the Teensy strip controller on it. So uh, Tiny Tools has a thing here for that. So make sure that it says Teensy. 
go up here, select firmware flasher. You're going to select which card model you have. So in this case, I got a 3.2. Uh, and there's been lots of questions if whether Teensy 4.0 will work. It's here, and there's lots of people in the community using them, so yeah, it should work fine. So 3.2, and then select the firmware. So we want the 3.2. And if you notice, it's a hex file, so that's the type of file this Teensy needs. So we're going to open that. Now, I did not have a very easy time doing this. Uh, it didn't seem to work flawlessly. So like if I show you what happened here, you go to upload it and it says that it is waiting and ready to go. And it says, hint, press the reset button. And I'm assuming that's the reset button that is on the actual Teensy itself. However, when I do that, it does not actually do it. I'll show you an idea. So when you hear the beep, that's me pressing the reset button already installed in the cab. It flashes super quick and it didn't seem to work for me when I did it this way. So I will show you how I did it and I will also show you a different way that you can just go direct to the source um, to the GitHub for the Teensy Strip controller. So what I had to do to get mine to work is I had to open up my Arduino and I need that Teensy bootloader program to pop up. All right, so once Arduino opens up, you actually need the bootloader program. So we're gonna tell it what we got here. So our board is the Teensy 3.2. Go up to our ports, I know it's three. And then the way I got the bootloader to pop up is there's a kind of sample sketch here. If we go to the sketch and go upload using programmer, you'll see that the bootloader program pops up. So it tries to do it and it gives it an error, but that's fine. Now we got our bootloader program up here working. So what I had to do is actually turn this on manual. So take off the automatic mode, go back to Arno's two tiny tools. Make sure everything's right, upload the firmware. And what I ended up having to do is pressing the button once and then letting it do its thing and then press it again. And that seemed to work. Like I said, I wish it was a little bit more slick. So that's the first time. Okay, get it to press upload firmware again for the second time and then press the button a second time and that seemed to work. However, I didn't really get to see any kind of confirmation anywhere. So I wasn't really happy with that. Uh, I wish that was a little bit more kind of slick and kind of confirmed and worked properly. Uh, but it also could be just the way I'm using it. So I'm gonna show you a second way just in case this did not work for you. So type in Teensy Strip Controller and then you'll see a github.com. I'll put the link down in the description below as well. So we're gonna click on that. And I really am a big fan of getting stuff like programs straight from the source. So this is from Swiss Lizard himself. Uh, it gives you all the information about the whole project. Uh, so what we're looking for is the actual hex files for the strip controller. So as you follow this all through to the bottom, firmware downloads, so we'll click on this. And there is an alpha, which was uh, an older version, and then there's a newer beta. There is some videos out there that said, you know, we couldn't get it to work properly or the text didn't look right until we actually tried the other one. I have confirmed on my cabinet that both of these work and I didn't see any difference at all. Um, however, the beta should be the newest version of it, so uh, that's what I'm gonna run here. So we're gonna download this. There's the hex file right there. Okay, then you're going to take that from your download folder. And I'm just going to plop it on my desktop for right now. Okay, and then you're going to want to unzip this. Okay, and I already have it, so I'm just going to say yes. It's just going to replace it. Okay, and this is the file right here. That's the hex file. So to manually put this in yourself, uh, like I said, open up Arduino, try to verify and upload using the programmer and you'll get the bootloader, tiny bootloader to pop up. 
right over here, if you left click on that, it's you're getting to pick what kind of hex code you're putting on this. So we're gonna go to our desktop and just make sure you have the right one. It's gonna be this one here, double left click. Okay, you can see at the bottom here that it is identified that it is put in the strip controller. And then what you're going to do is press the program button. And if it works, it should say program complete. Okay, and then go over to here and press reboot. And it should say okay, and then you are good to go. That is ready to for your virtual pinball cabinet. All right, that's a wrap in another video from Way of the Wrench, this time on how to set up your cabinet file so that your LEDs can talk to your DOF setup that is coming in the next video so that you can get all the twinkly stuff going on here. If you have any questions or concerns, put them down in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And hey, if you haven't already, why don't you join us on Instagram? That way you get all the behind the scenes pictures and videos in between stuff that's going out on YouTube. Till next time, take it easy.